Hi guys, I'm Rival. Welcome to part four of the Scrum training series. This is the Sprint Planning Meeting. Just in case you guys aren't familiar with the Scrum training series, here's a list of videos in this series. Please check them out. They are definitely, definitely helpful. So, overview of the Sprint Planning Meeting. So the people who need to be present in this meeting are the product owner, the development team, and the Scrum Master. The role of the Scrum Master is to manage the meeting. The Scrum Master makes sure that people aren't talking about stuff that does not need to be spoken about and the Scrum Master will make sure the meeting keeps moving forward. The role of the product owner is to indicate his priorities and the role of the development team is to plan the sprint's work. This meeting can take up to a maximum of eight hours long. That is for a 30 day sprint. Normally I do a two week sprint in our team and um, if you're doing a two week sprint, your sprint planning meeting should only take four hours. Okay, so the sprint planning meeting is known as a two part meeting. In part one, we decide which PBIs, product backlog items, are going to be moved to the sprint backlog from the product backlog. In part two, we are going to come up with sprint tasks from the PBIs that we have moved into the sprint backlog. So part one, moving PBIs. The product owner must be happy with his product backlog priority. That means that all the PBIs in the current backlog needs to be in a order that is that suits the product owner and suits the business. Usually this is already done and refined in the product backlog refinement meeting. So since it's all done ready to go, what the product owner needs to say is, okay, here's my top priority item. Let's start with that. Then the dev team and the product uh, owner need to understand the definition of what is done for this PBI. Once that's defined, we can then move the product backlog item to the sprint backlog item. We rinse and repeat this process until we have filled our capacity for our sprint. So here's, let's take an example. So let's imagine that this is our product backlog and it has two pro product backlog items in it. So let's take the first one, add related jobs. The product owner would like a related jobs block added to the jobs page. So this takes us to part two and that would be creating sprint tasks. So we have moved the add related jobs PBI to our sprint backlog. This is actually a new feature that the team is going to have to build. And now the dev team needs to come up with the sprint tasks. So what would be the first thing that we would do for this new feature? Well, we'll have to investigate our current code base. So we'll need to see where the touch points, what, you know, where exactly will we be working and what do we need to be aware of. Once that's done and decided, the front end de developer or designer will then design this feature. The developers will then implement this new feature and it'll go to QA where the team will test the new feature. Just remember, in Agile, what we're trying to do each sprint is to build a potentially shippable product. So that's why all the steps need to be go through. So whatever we build can potentially be shipped at the end of the sprint. So that's, so that's it, finishing up. So assigning tasks. You know, once we have gathered a massive list of our sprint tasks and our sprint backlog items, what we then would do is not assign it to each team member. In Agile, what we do is create this list and once we start the sprint, people or developers can then pick out the tasks that they feel they would work on and once they complete the task, they'll just pick out a new one from the board. So next, we must make sure all the work can be completed within the sprint time box. We should not compromise our definition of done 
and we should not allocate work that could potentially run over the time box. This is to put as less stress on the development team as possible. The guys who are working on the product, they need to be not in a stress-free environment because that's quite difficult to achieve, but they need to be under as less stress as possible so they can take their time to research, to review the existing code, and to make sure that the products they are, or the new features that they are building are done to the best of their ability and it's not rushed, it's not shortcuts aren't taken. And in Agile, how we approach every task is to look for the quick wing first and then refactor the code. So we need to make sure that there is some time for refactoring to make sure that whatever we build is at a good standard. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to dump them in the comments below. Um, please look out for the next video. The next video will cover daily stand-ups. Thanks guys, please like and subscribe below.